the state of Colorado is going to have to take the responsibility of, of executing someone, the system should be flawless. And because it's not, the governor of Colorado grants a reprieve to convicted killer Nathan Dunlap. 7 News with the stunning developments live just three hours ago. Dunlap will not be executed for killing four people and injuring a fifth at this Aurora Chuck E. Cheese restaurant 20 years ago. The point of having a temporary reprieve rather than clemency is really out of of respect to all the, the jurors and judges, the prosecutors and defense attorneys, the expert witnesses, uh, the, the respect to the, the rule of law in the state of Colorado, we're not, we're not overturning that. But I recognize as, as governor, uh, I could not find the justice in making that decision. 7 News with team coverage of the governor's decision. I was in the governor's office 90 minutes ago to ask him why and how he came to that decision. 7 News reporter Amanda Koss there as victims' family members received the news. And call 7 investigator Teresa Marchetta breaking the story online. She's live outside the Capitol talking to the district attorney who prosecuted the case. District Attorney George Brockler uh, here on the west steps of the Capitol earlier, flanked by victims, family members, and former prosecutors, hammering the governor for what he says is his inability to make a decision. I spoke with him one on one right afterwards. So, to be 20 years and 20 miles removed from one of the most heinous acts of violence in the history of this state, and here, I'm just not sure, it does not feel like an act of courage. It is certainly not leadership. My best guess is it's not what Coloradoans expected from a governor who was sworn in to execute the laws of this state. What was your first thought, your first response? Internally, it was words that probably can't be spoken here, but it's a real head scratcher. I did not see that coming. I was prepared to be uh, frustrated and disappointed at the wrong decision. I was prepared also to be optimistic about our future, given the right decision, but I was not prepared for no decision. And make no mistake, no matter how the governor's office tries to spin this, a reprieve is not a decision, it is a shrug. For someone who professed to do this out of respect for the victims, he has left this seeping wound open. Is this going to impact your office and how you prosecute cases in the future? Well, no, because I can say with a significant amount of confidence, I do respect the people of the state of Colorado, and I respect the laws on their books, and I will continue to enforce them as someone who is an elected representative of them. Uh, I'm not going to substitute my will and my judgment for the laws that are on the books right now. I, I don't think that's courage, and I don't think it's leadership. And Brockler tells me he plans to scrutinize the governor's decision with the help of the attorney general's office, but it's unlikely that decision can be appealed. Live from the state capitol, I'm Call 7 investigator Teresa Marchetta. Thanks, Teresa. And that district attorney also telling 7 News there's only one person going to bed with a smile on his face tonight, and that is Nathan Dunlap. Well, we spoke with Dunlap's attorney 90 minutes ago who took issue with that statement. He's not going to bed with a smile tonight. Mr. Dunlap faces the rest of his life in a cell that's about the size of two king-size beds, from which he gets out maybe an hour a day. Maybe Mr. Brockler needs to understand what punishment is really like. Now, we are told Dunlap will remain in administrative segregation, meaning solitary confinement in Sterling, where he's been since June of 1996. Seven News there as one victim's father, Bob Crowell, talks to the governor on the phone and first learns of this decision. Seven News reporter Amanda Koss getting his reaction immediately after she continues our team coverage live right now. And Bob Crowell was sitting down for the news at his family dining room table on a conference call with the governor and other victims' family members, telling Seven News it's not the reprieve, but the governor's reasoning why that caught him off guard. Three teenagers and a mother of two were shot to death as they worked inside this Aurora Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in 1993. Nathan Dunlap was convicted of the murders. He's been sitting on death row since 1996 and was scheduled to be put to death in August until today. In prison without parole the rest of his life. Bob Crowell's daughter, Sylvia, one of the four murdered. Crowell and other victims' family members on a conference call with Governor John Hickenlooper. Raised voices heard through the headset and on this end. Governor, this is Bob Crowell. Crowell wanting to know how much money has been spent since Dunlap's trial. Keep in mind that the money can't make a tenth as much difference as 
having lost our daughters and sons. Governor John Hickenlooper responding. He just said, I can't see myself executing someone. This father shaking his head. Twelve jurors all said put him to death for what he has done and the governor has turned that upside down. And Bob's wife, Marge, speaking with 7 News off camera, telling us that since day one of this, they have been leaning on their faith for comfort. And at this point, she knows that her daughter, Sylvia, she says, quote, is in God's hands. But that only brings a certain amount of comfort right now. Reporting live, Amanda Cost, 7 News.